has been really intense. Um, yesterday was probably one of the most explosive days so far. I mean, it's a lot that's happened, but yesterday was really intense. Actually, yesterday gave us a little bit more insight on why things played out the way that they played out. Um, so let's just talk about that a little bit. But before I even begin, I want to say shout out to Mama Duck. Prayers up for Mama Duck. You got to understand how strong you have to be to deal with something like this. Whether you have your opinions about, you know, things that have played out in the past with her in the media or whatever, she is the strongest person. Like, you have to be super strong to deal with all of this. The big story coming out was the guy THF TZ. He, it seems that um, some people have given it an account of how he kind of called uh people to come from o block what what did you hear about that story uh about what chftz did inside the store a lot of people i think were wondering why the alleged hit went down the way that it did and why people were so scrambled and they didn't plan it the right way i think that was probably one of the biggest criticisms like yeah like why it would happened they it happened downtown you know what i'm saying like in a weird spot mm -hmm. Right. And then they didn't plan it and they didn't do this. Well, come to find out, they got an emergency call from THF TZ saying that he was in danger, saying that uh, Duck was actually after him and he didn't have no protection on him and he needed backup, basically. So he right. put a battery in their back to rush over and basically help him in a imaginary situation that wasn't even happening. Mind you, Duck is downtown shopping for his child, for his child's birthday, minding his own business, just quickly getting some stuff from the store. And he, he spotted by THF TZ, who then- <laughs> The security guard that actually witnessed everything was in court. It's a Hispanic uh, security guard. And he was a very credible witness. He basically dude had him on, like dude caught him was recording him like the whole time this was happening like in real time. Yeah. So the security guard was already kind of suspicious about what was going on. He was actually thinking that maybe they were going to rob the place or something was going to happen. So he was already on alert. So he was listening and they actually had the audio of what THF TZ was telling D-Thang about the situation. And he basically hyped it up, made it sound like it was a dire situation. And that's basically why everybody was in a rush to get down there. That's that's crazy, man. And that's basically what Mama does, that kind of knowing that's how all of this started, that kind of kind of sensor over the edge. Yeah, it's like, imagine having to replay the day that your son was murdered and you're getting all the clues and the details of how it happens and it's just playing in your minds the way that everything is unfolding it's just very intense and i just send my prayers and my love out to mama duck because she's dealing with a lot and having to go to court every day and little by little all of these details being revealed about the way that your son was murdered wow. is crazy i couldn't even imagine i never want to have to be in that situation so this being like the second time that she was kind of you know she wasn't able to stay the full amount of time in court. Is there any like issue with maybe Mama Doug not being allowed back in court for the rest of the trial? I mean, I hope not. I think that for her mental health, it might be a little bit intense. But as the mother of, you know, the person that was murdered in the trial, this is all about, I think that they should let her stay in there. Um, I think that, you know, it just depends on what's going to unfold. We have a couple more weeks left. This trial is expected to go to about the second week of January. There is another room where you're able to view uh, everything that's happening. So that might that might be another place where they move her to just watch everything. Um, but I guess we'll see. What would you do? How would you feel? You know, this is yeah, a lot be, to deal yeah, with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All of this is crazy just knowing that, you know, um, you know, THF TZ basically lied to his own gang to kind of take out a personal rival because he knew that, you know, they kind of wanted to take him out too. It was kind of a, you know, a selfish, nasty, it's all nasty, man. So just being the mom of, that, uh, of the person who died, I could definitely understand them 
being hurt by that. You know what I mean? Um, speaking of people getting kicked out of court, man, I wanted to salute you, Dre. <laughs> I gotta salute you, man. You know, I, I'm I'm one of them people, man. I like I like being around the leaders. I like being around the trendsetters. I like being around the people that you know mm-hmm. they make the news. They don't chase the news. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and I definitely wanted to shout you out because not a day later after I sat down with you last time and we talked about what was going on in the courtroom and you dropped your video, uh, really break it down greatly. So if y'all haven't seen, please go check out Dre's last video. She really broke down exactly what was going on in the courtroom uh, that week that she went. And not a day later, uh, there was a, <laughs> some bloggers and they flew from out of town. They came to Chicago and they tried to uh, be present at the FBG Doug trial. And the reports from them were that they were removed from court by the FBI. And they were told that, you know, people were after them and their life was in danger. And they need to flee Chicago as soon as possible. Did you hear about this story, Dre? You know, I briefly did. I got a lot of links. Um, a lot of uh, supporters were sending me the story and they were sending me the video. What I will say about the situation is that I went to court. I had no issues. Nobody came to me and said anything. Nobody tried to kick me out. I sat actually in the courtroom. um, No issues, no problems. Uh, And I know they knew who I was. Like, they knew who I was. So I think it just depends on what you're saying and what you're putting in your videos this is a very high profile case and this is not a joke there's right. five there's six people with their life on the line that are looking at life in prison so they're watching all of our videos they're watching all of the bloggers that are covering this like i said in the other video it's an intense check we give our ids so they know who we are so when we right. check in you got to get your id so there's no way that they wouldn't have caught you know salacious bloggers coming into the courtroom everything that we're putting online is being watched do you really think that the fbi and the dea and all of these people are not watching you online and what you're doing they are they see you coming from a mile away so i think it's really about the way that you carry yourself and the way that you're putting your coverage out because like i said i never had any issues no one ever came to me and tried to move me from the courtroom no one told me to take my video down um you know, I have relationships with the people that are involved in the situation and I just, I haven't had any issues. So it was actually kind of surprising to me to see that people came from out of town and, and got kicked out of the courtroom. Cause I'm like, did wow. Did you ask Mama did Duck about me? that? Like, did she see when this was happening? Well, I will say that I think maybe some of the allegations were hyped up for more intense you know, I think I think some of the the storyline of what happened was hyped up for sensationalism because okay. even if they were kicked out of the main courtroom, you could still watch it in the other. Co- There's a whole nother room, like I said earlier, where you can just watch everything on a screen. So if, so somebody if wanted they were to come, out, right. So if somebody wanted to come to the court and watch the trial. Or like, let's say the main, the actual room was too full or whatever the problem was, they could sit in a whole nother room, still inside the court and watch the case. With no problem. Okay. I I didn't know that. So you, you're the first one that told me that. Yeah. There's a whole nother room where you could, it's like a a viewing room in the courthouse with a flat screen and plenty of seats where you can just sit down and really take notes and be a, you know, a journalist or a reporter that you came to be. So, you know, reports of getting kicked out are probably a little bit sensationalized. I think they might have been escorted out of the main courtroom, but you still could just go into the private room. Right. The private viewing room. Yeah. And still get everything that you needed. Being from Chicago, you just know how to maneuver, I think. And when you come from out of town and other places, you just got to be very careful about how you are, you know, 
put what energy you're putting out and what you're trying to do. You got to really think about it ahead of time. And um, I know that covering something like this is not a joke. Right. So I'm not slandering anybody. I'm not slandering Trenches News. I, I never said anything bad about anything. I'm just literally giving you guys the direct details of what happened. And I think that a lot of people probably appreciate that because I'm not in there, you know, calling anybody a snitch. None of that. It's just like, this is what happened today. <laughs> Yesterday, a story broke mm -hmm. about uh, the dude from Chicago, rapper from Chicago named King Yellow. Um, some paperwork dropped and a YouTube, popular YouTuber dropped a video. And you know what I'm saying? Everybody's running around in circles because this dude King Yellow supposedly told the FBI about gang affiliations and different rappers and stuff like that. Did you hear about this story, Jerry? You know, I briefly did. I was actually in an interview with No Jumper, so I didn't get all of the updates. I know that they were going back and forth. Um, you know, my style of journalism, I don't like to really drag people and I don't like to unearth documents and try to ruin people's credibility and careers. So I don't really... You know, I know that King Yellow just minds his own business. He be minding his own business. He be making videos. He's he's a commentator. He started blogging and vlogging. And he just hasn't been problematic at all. I haven't really seen him going at anybody. I haven't really seen him exposing anyone or dragging anyone. So why not just like leave him alone? I don't know. I, I have to really dive into the case more and like look at it but from what i'm gathering it's like what was the point of trying to drag another like black man down right now like king yellow hasn't done anything to nobody and from the the brief details that i got if he's talking about this person is gd and this person is bd like everybody knows that <laughs> oh. hey i agree with you i just wanted to, i just wanted to run it past you i agree with you 100 percent though you know what i'm saying so i don't think it's anything revelating and i don't think it's gonna rule in anybody's career um and i just don't think it was absolutely necessary 